everyone and welcome to Geared Up. Uh, we are live in the HQ studio in Stockholm. So today we are going to talk about the zoom reflector and everything you can do with that. And together with me I have, you can see in the background, Andrea Beluso. So we're gonna actually, I'm gonna model today. We hope it goes well. <laughs> and uh, you can see all the products in there or there, depending on your device. So click them and learn more about the products. And also you have Gustav in our one-to-one -one calls that you can call and ask all about our products and get to know them more. So yeah, let's get on with shooting. So hi everybody, how are you? I'm so excited to be back in the Photo HQ studio. And uh, I have my amazing model, Lisa, here. And um, I'm going to talk to you about this baby, the zoom reflector, the standard zoom reflector that everybody knows, but actually not many people actually know what it does. And it's pure magic in my hands. Um, first of all, I'm going to show it to you with the pro head because then I have the full zoom range. Um, and you can use it with a flat uh, front heads uh, with no problem whatsoever. The only difference is that the zoom function is a little bit more restricted with the flat fronts. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the whys and I'm going to try and compress this whole thing about the zoom reflector because I could actually seriously fill up like I don't know how many lives talking just about this because uh, it can do a lot of things. So let's start with um, just showing you what it can do with different positions of the zoom function. Let me do it the old-fashioned way and uh, measure my light. So first of all, I just want to, want to show you, and this you can see with the modeling light already, by moving the zoom reflector from position 4, which is all the way forward in the head, to position 10, you see how the light changes? I mean, it's a completely different light. And I adore this just because, I mean, I can really tweak it. So I'm going to start taking the first picture at position 4 and measure my light. I'm going to try and take as many pictures as I can in this short amount of time. Let's see where we get to. There, and uh, I'm going to be shooting at uh, f16 ISO 100 with a speed of 500 of a second. And 500 a second is just because I'm not using a tripod, that's all. <laughs> there you go. Looking good, Lisa. And let's see the result that we have. This is the first one. Now, I'm going to move to position, uh, let's call it uh, 7, just to call a number. And let's see if we see a difference with that, which I'm sure we will. Come on, flash meter. I mean, there we go. There. Oh, my flash didn't go. There. So let's compare the two pictures quickly. <laughs> and let me remove this one. So here we have the first one. And here we have the next one. And we see next to each other, it's already two different lights. We then go to position 10, which is even more difference. And the differences that you see are, could seem minimal to some people. But that is actually what's going to make the difference with you as a photographer into actually getting to know your light shaping tools like your best friends because they all behave in totally different ways. There we go. Yet another light, so if we put all of them next to each other, we see three totally different lights. Then what I'm going to do is to keep it there and uh, no, actually I'm going to go back to position seven and I'm going to start Actually, no, sorry. <laughs> I'll go back to position 10 and I'll move closer. Here we go. I'm just going to tilt it a little bit just for the angle to be the same as before. So I'm coming very, very close. 
and let's see what this gives us. Apart from a hell of a lot more light coming on Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. You can feel the heat, yeah. right? <laughs> so by moving the light closer, I'm going to try and not get my light shaping tool in the picture. <laughs> There we go. Cool. We see that uh, the background has gone black. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's move even further away. So we move the light all the way here. And readjust the angle to where it was before. And lift it up just a tiny bit. And I'm going to bring that uh, Whoa, the generator, I have to bring it closer. Do you want me to? Yeah. It's okay. There. I can go even further. This is pretty cool here. <laughs> Measure the light again. And here I really have to pump it up compared to what it was before. There we go. There we go, let's try that. Are you ready, Lisa? Cool. There we go. Beautiful. And we see how we got yet another picture. We got five different pictures. Oh my God, how many can I get? How many different ones can I get? And then I'm gonna go. I got a question from the chat. Yes, tell uh, me. A lot of people are using flat fronts. How, yes. how would you describe the difference between use, using the zoom reflector on a flat front versus the uh, pro head? Okay, very, very good question. The only difference is that on a flat front, you will have, okay, I'll show you the pro head here. And you'll see that there's numbers these are zoom positions. They go from 4 until 10. On a flat front, they, will, they might go up to 8 or, in some cases, 6 as well. So depending on the flat front that you have, you'll have a more restricted um, zoom function. The other difference is that flat heads have a built-in reflector. So uh, you already have a reflector. That's why you can use a flat front without any light shaping tools if you want to. And if you want to be more creative, as I do, then you add other accessories like the zoom reflector, for instance. Uh, but when you add a zoom reflector to another existing reflector, it will be a similar effect. Uh, it's just a more little. That's all. That's the only thing. Uh, otherwise, use it with your flat fronts, use it with your pro heads, use it with anything pro photo. Cool. So the other thing that I would like, did that answer your question? I hope so, cool. So now the other thing that I would like to do is that I come back here and I'm gonna start working with accessories. Let's go back to position four and the distance is more or less what we had in the beginning. Six feet. More or less, more or less six feet. And I'm gonna start with a grid of 20 degrees and the grids are just pop them in the front of the zoom reflector. Maybe point it in this direction so we can see them. Uh, yes. Ta-da! Oh. There. Can you see it? A little bit more. A little bit more. There, 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 there. More. Cool. And with the grids you have to be a little bit more careful because they narrow your light beam. So if you move the head just a little bit you see that that's the end of the actual beam. So you want to be central if that's the effect that you want. And I mean, you know, for me in photography there are no rules, and especially with lighting. So really get what works for you when you're setting the lights. Whoa! That was a lot of light. <laughs> there we go. Still. And we're there. Cool. So let's see what the grid does. And grids, regardless whether you use them on a zoom reflector or a softbox, they all have the same function. 
In other words, if we look at this picture compared to the first one, which was the same um, zoom position, we see that we have more contrast on the last one. So basically, the grids add contrast and restrict your light spread. That's what grids do. And the tighter the grid, the more what I just said will be as an effect. So I'm going to change from the grid of 20 degrees, which is this one, to let's just go straight to the tightest one. You'll see the difference right there. And you see the difference in thickness. Well, this is really hot now. But you see the difference in thickness as well, which means that the five degrees is a lot tighter, is going to restrict the light even more and create even more contrast. How does it get better? <laughs> so let's just pop it back on there. And again, what I said before about being precise of you know, where you're aiming your light beam, it's even more critical with the five degrees than with the 20. So let's get another shot here. You ready, Lisa? Are you having fun? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> there we go. And let's see, let's compare the last two. So the one to the left is with a grid of 20 degrees and the one to the right is a grid of 5 degrees. So I'm going to take the grid away because I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get as many pictures as I can with this baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to do a side light. So let's start here and uh, yeah, let's do it from there. <laughs> <laughs> the hesitation. <laughs> the hesitation. The creative hesitation. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. There we go. So now We have a side light with no grid. Same zoom position. And by changing the angle of the light, we add drama to the picture with the shadows. And if I, to this picture, add a grid of, uh, oh, let's put the five degree again, but with an angle light. And Lisa, I would like you to face the light Whatever you do, do not look into the light. Okay. Okay, so just your face facing the light. Even more, even more, more pop up there. Cool. There. One more shot. <laughs> uh, there. It was one f-stop difference for those of you that are interested in the technical aspect of it. Brilliant. Lift your chin up a little bit more. There you go. Beautiful. And what we see here, the difference between the last two <laughs> is that we have even more contrast, more drama. The background has gone completely black. And I can carry on until the cows come home, as they say in the UK. And um, I have a few, a few more accessories that I would love to talk to you about. One is the grid and filter holder. Now, the grid and filter holder is extremely important. I've seen so many times in so many photo studios, photographers that put a diffuser in front of a grid with gaffer tape and whatever to hold it. And what that does, it actually kills the effect of the grid. It creates the diffuse effect, so it, it makes the light more diffused, but it kills the whole grid effect. Uh, so what the grid and filter holder does is actually placing the diffuser behind the grid. And then there is also another accessory, which is the snoot. And we have the barn doors. Now, a lot of people think that these two have a similar effect or the same effect. They don't. They really don't. And uh, I would love to talk to you more about this right now. And uh, I think we'll save these three babies until next time. How about that? Uh, how are we doing for time? Yeah, I mean, we've got one question on YouTube uh, yes. with regards to the difference between the OCF grids and the, uh, the grids you've been using here. 
actually there is no difference go ahead with the OCF grids as well uh, I love them when I'm using my uh, flat fronts uh, OCF uh, from the OCF range I use those and it's great how you can apply the gels as well that's brilliant and um, yeah there's no difference um, it's different degrees but the the effect is you have the same um, a similar difference if you want between the three uh, grids and their kits so go ahead and use either the standard grids or the OCF grids and I love grids because they create more drama they create more crispiness they create more contrast and uh, and it's just fun you know you make a picture come alive so should we do a quick recap of looking at yes the let's do a quick recap we have taken nine pictures in not many minutes and we can really see the difference between all of them where we um, just by changing the zoom uh, position on uh, on the first pictures we really change the light and uh, then using the distance and we see how when we move the light further we brighten up the background when we move it closer to the subject the background goes really dark as far as going black completely and uh, and then when you start working with the uh, angles of the light you create more drama and you add grids to that and it's just never ending so the zoom reflector it might be a standard go to go to tool and I have seen so many photographers in the whole world that don't even use not even a tenth of what I just told you and uh, we did all these pictures in no time at all so how creative can you get with a zoom reflector and with any other light shaping tool coming to that and I know that so many of you think that, oh, but this light shaping tool is very similar to the other one. And no matter how close you get between light quality of one to another um, light shaping tool, or even this one, we could talk um, about these two pictures. So the first one and the third one that we took, that they're very similar. And to me, they're not look at them carefully and you see that there is actually two different lights and unless you actually become as picky as I am with these differences that when you see these differences you actually start seeing light and you start using light and talking about light and feeling light like a chef does with spices um, and it's those differences that will make your difference and as photographers we're all unique and it's exactly this that we want to bring out to the world. The more unique we are, the more fun we have, and you know what? The more money we can earn too. So um, how about it? I give the word to Lisa. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the lesson for everyone. Uh, and thank you for joining us today. I hope you come back one day. I hope so too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was all for today. What is next week? It's a surprise. Ah, it's a surprise. We don't know. You will get an email about it, so stay tuned. And also join Gibbe in the one-to-one. -one. Uh, he will. You can ask him all the questions about the modifiers or the light sources or anything you want. He will be there. Um, so yeah, have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>